Hello everyone, I'm Chris and this is a full recap of TED released in 2012 and TED 2 released in 2015. If you end up enjoying this video and want to see more from us, then make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to know anytime we upload a new video. On January 31st, 1999, the very first episode of Family Guy aired on Fox, and despite a few hiccups along the way, the show was still one of the most popular animated comedies you'll find on television, and its success quickly led to the creation of a few more animated projects produced by the show's creator and main voice actor, Seth MacFarlane, including the likes of American Dad and The Cleveland Show, before eventually in 2012, MacFarlane gained the opportunity to make his feature-length directional debut with Ted, that also turned out to be a hit, as it brought in $556 million worldwide at the box office on a budget of $50 million making it the 12th highest grossing film of that year. So three years later in 2015, a sequel titled Ted 2 was released as well, although it didn't get quite the reception that the original did, with it bringing in about $217 million on a budget of $68 million, and ranking 36th at the box office that year. But still, the franchise has proven successful enough for a prequel series to be greenlit, once again titled Ted and releasing on January 11th, 2024. So ahead of the new series, we've decided to take a look back at the two previous TED installments and run down everything that took place. The franchise opens on Christmas Eve in 1985, when we meet an 8 year old boy named John Bennett, who we learn has had a tough time making friends in his neighborhood, and so isn't in high spirits like most other kids during the Christmas season. That would soon change the very next day though, when he receives a teddy bear, who he names Teddy, for Christmas, that he becomes instantly attached to. So much so that he makes a wish just before heading to sleep that night to make it so that Teddy could actually talk and that they could be real best friends forever. And it turns out to have been the perfect night to make this wish, as a shooting star just so happened to be passing overhead. So the next morning, John wakes up to a now alive Teddy. The story of John's Christmas miracle quickly begins sweeping the nation and leads to Ted becoming somewhat of a celebrity. But despite his growing fame, he and John still continue to spend all of their time together, including during a thunderstorm one night when the two make a promise to one another that they'll always be Thunder Buddies for life. We then jump 27 years into the future and see that they've managed to keep that promise, as the two, especially since Ted's celebrity status has dwindled after a few run-ins with the law, still spend every day together. Although now mostly just smoking weed and watching TV, when John's not off working at his middling job for a car rental service or with his girlfriend Lori Collins, who he'll be celebrating their four-year anniversary with the following day, and who he's worried may also be expecting a proposal since he and Ted both believe he's not ready. So instead of proposing the following night at their anniversary dinner, John gifts her a pair of earrings and explains that one day, when he has the money, he will propose to her. But Lori's skeptical that'll ever happen, since she believes that, in order for him to grow up and start a career, he'll have to stop letting Ted hold him back. John's defensive about this at first, but upon returning home, he's convinced that she may be right, as they find Ted sitting on their couch with four hookers, along with a random turd on the floor. So over the next few days, John helps Ted get a job as a cashier and move into his own apartment. But despite no longer living in the same place, the two still continue spending a majority of their time together with John even ditching work so the two can go get high. And during one of these smoke sessions, they're randomly approached by a man named Donnie and his son Robert, the former of whom reveals himself to be a huge Ted fan ever since he was a young boy, before asking if John would be willing to sell him, which he of course declines. But Donnie still leaves his address and phone number with John just in case he changes his mind. Sometime later, John and Lori go out to dinner with Ted and his new girlfriend, Tammy Lynn, who he'd met at work. And although the night starts off well, Tammy becomes irritated by Lori, calling her a snob and making a scene that forces her and Ted to leave so she can calm down, while Lori gets upset with John for not standing up for her, and also confronts him for not having actually changed any of his bad habits since Ted's moved out. So he apologizes and promises to get it together, which he's given the opportunity to prove the following week, when the two are invited to her perverted boss Rex's company party. Shortly following their arrival though, John receives a call from Ted, who's throwing a house party of his own demanding John come over so he can meet one of its attendees, Sam Jones, the star of their favorite show, Flash Gordon. And so John, after initially hesitating, eventually decides to head to the party for a few minutes, which ends up actually being a few hours as upon arriving and being greeted by the real Sam Jones, he and Ted are quickly persuaded into doing coke and taking shots with him for the next couple of hours, until John sobers up and realizes he completely forgotten about Lori. So he rushes out of the apartment, only for her to immediately arrive outside and tearfully break up with him, as well as demand he leave her apartment by the end of the night. And following her exit, John then lashes out on and blames Ted for everything 
claiming he should have just stopped hanging out with him a long time ago, before leaving to be on his own. It isn't long before Ted attempts to reconnect with John though, as a few days later, he shows up at the window of his hotel room, encouraging him to continue fighting for Lori. But John just tells him to go away, so a frustrated Ted then begins scolding John for not taking accountability for his own actions and decisions, which in turn prompts John to wish he'd just gotten a Teddy Ruxpin for Christmas instead of Ted, a remark that results in a violent brawl that only ends when the TV falls onto John and crushes his dick, after which they each apologize to one another and exchange I love yous. Despite him and John now being back on good terms, Ted still feels guilty for his relationship with Lori falling apart. So he heads over to her apartment a few days later in an attempt to convince her to give John one more chance, with him even promising that if she does, he'll leave and never come back. And although Lori claims she doesn't want that, Ted insists that as long as John has his teddy bear, he'll always be a boy. So Lori decides to go and meet with John, but immediately after leaving her apartment, Donnie and Robert show up and kidnap Ted before bringing him home with them, where Donnie's revealed to have a shrine dedicated to him. Donnie explains that when he was a little boy, he saw Ted on TV and thought he was the most amazing and wonderful thing he'd ever seen. But when he asked his dad for a magical teddy bear of his own, he was told no. So he promised himself that if he ever had a son, he would never say no to him. Hence why he's now gifted Ted to Robert. Donnie then leaves so the two can have some playtime, with Ted cursing as he exits. And for that, Robert rips off his ear. So Ted's forced to play along for a while until he manages to distract Robert by convincing him to count to 100 for a game of hide and seek. During which Ted manages to sneak out of the room and after reattaching his ear with a stapler, find Donnie's home phone. Throughout all this, Lori goes to meet up with John, who actually decides to give up his pursuit of her and instead just apologizes for being such a bad boyfriend in hopes that she can find someone to truly make her happy before exiting. Lori though catches up to him as he leaves and offers to give him a ride home, before John then immediately receives a call from Ted, who explains his situation and asks for John's help before Donnie cuts the line. So John and Lori, thanks to the card Donnie had left with him earlier, rush over to his home and arrive just as Donnie and Robert drive off with Ted, resulting in a car chase that eventually leads to Donnie crashing his vehicle just outside of Fenway Park, which Ted rushes into in an attempt to escape. Donnie continues following after him though, while Robert rushes towards John and Lori, forcing the former to punch the kid in the face and knock him out, before then tracking down Ted who's still being followed up the scaffolding by Donnie, who also manages to repeatedly tug on Ted, resulting in his stomach ripping open more and more each time until the force proves strong enough to tear him in half and send him falling to the floor. Police sirens then scare Donnie away while John and Lori approach an injured Ted, who appears to be on the brink of death, so they rush him back to her apartment and attempt to sew him back together, but it's ultimately too late and Ted passes away from his injuries. John's left in complete shock and silence from the death of his best friend, with him not even getting scared by the thunder outside, which he and Ted were always known to be afraid of, and he eventually just heads to sleep. While asleep though, Lori stays seated by the window and miraculously notices a shooting star passing by. So she then takes this opportunity to wish Ted back to life and the next morning, her wish comes true, with Ted awakening and sharing an embrace with John before thanking Lori for bringing him back and John, upon realizing what Lori had done for him, asks for her hand in marriage and she says yes. Unfortunately though, two years following this proposal and their subsequent marriage, the two would end up getting a divorce, deciding they were just wrong for each other and John feeling she was trying to change him into something he's not. Meanwhile, throughout this time, Ted and Tammy Lynn had fallen further in love and six months after John's divorce, they decided to get married, which similar to John and Lori, doesn't turn out as wonderful as they had expected, with them arguing constantly, but soon enough, they're able to smooth things over after Ted suggests they have a child, which works in reigniting their love for each other. Since Ted can't make a child of his own, he looks to Sam Jones for help, asking if he'd be willing to donate his sperm, but Jones says no, explaining that, after doing a lot of blow when he was young, he's been left with a sperm count of one. So Ted's next choice for a donor is the New England Patriots quarterback, Tom Brady, although his sperm they're gonna have to steal. So they attempt to do so that night by sneaking into his house, but they quickly end up getting caught and thrown out. Following this failed attempt, John offers to be Ted's donor, and Ted reveals that he was actually the first person he wanted to go to but didn't want to put the burden on him so soon after his divorce. Unfortunately for Ted and Tammy Lynn though, they're actually unable to move ahead with the procedure since Tammy Lynn is revealed to be infertile, so they instead just look into adopting a child. But this is also not an option for the couple as they're informed that since Ted is technically not recognized as a person by the state, their application is denied. Ted's pretty shaken up by the news and things are soon made even worse when with him now being on the state's radar, he gets fired from his job, his credit cards are terminated, and his marriage to Tammy is annulled. 
So John and Ted decide to take this to court, with their case eventually being assigned to rookie lawyer Samantha Leslie Jackson, whose abilities they're skeptical of at first, since this is her first case, but they quickly form a close bond with her, particularly over their shared love for weed. And this time spent together also leads to her and John seemingly catching feelings for one another. The trial gains a lot of mainstream publicity, with the media split in their opinions on if Ted is a person or not. But despite Sam doing her best, she's ultimately no match for undefeated lawyer Shep Wilde. And in the end, the court rules against Ted, declaring that Ted is not a person, but property. Sam blames herself for the loss and suggests that they need a better lawyer. So she calls Patrick Megan, the top civil rights attorney in America, and sets up a meeting with him that Friday. But this meeting ends up proving to be a waste of time, as Megan, although sympathetic to Ted's cause, has decided against taking their case, believing that Ted hasn't made an effort to positively impact the world. Ted, angered by the news, as well as by the fact that John and Sam in his eyes only care about being all over each other, decides to go for a walk, eventually heading into the Comic-Con event being held nearby, inside of which he's met by a man in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles costume, who claims to be a big fan and asks to take a picture. But once the two are alone, the man reveals himself to actually be Donnie. After ripping Ted in half a couple years ago, Donnie was eventually caught by police and arrested, but quickly got the charges dropped since he hadn't actually broken any laws, and later got a new job as a janitor at the Hasbro Toy Company's headquarters, where he eventually gained the opportunity to meet with the company's CEO, Mr. Jessup, and convince him to use whatever pull he has to get Shep Wilde hired on the case to ensure that Ted is declared property, so that after the trial is finished, Ted will be open to seizure by the firm, allowing Hasbro to create more living teddy bears just like him. So since Ted's now lost the case, Donnie's been sent to bring him back to the company by Jessup. But just before he can snatch Ted up, the latter manages to avoid him and run off before calling John and informing him of Donnie's return. The call is quickly interrupted though, as Donnie continues chasing after and eventually knocks Ted out, allowing him to then bring Ted to Mr. Jessup, who'd had his own presentation at the event. And so the two tape him to a table and prepare to cut into him. But just before they can, John and Sam arrive prompting Jessup to quickly run off as to avoid any involvement, while John grabs hold of Donnie and knocks him to the ground with a punch, that also knocks off his toupee before leaving with Ted. Following this, Ted apologizes for how he was acting earlier and says if Sam and John want to be together, nothing would make him happier, as well as stating that it doesn't matter if the world thinks he's property because he knows who he is. Before they can leave the building though, they're once again tracked down by Donnie who sends a giant replica of the Starship Enterprise flying towards Ted. But just as it's about to strike, John pushes him out of the way and is sent flying by the ship into the wall instead, that comes crashing down on top of him and knocks him out. Ted then sends security after Donnie, but he stands with a group of other Ninja Turtles to confuse him. So Ted plays Donnie's favorite song that he'd seen him dancing to when he was first kidnapped years ago, and Donnie ultimately can't resist the urge to dance, leading to him being arrested. John's then quickly taken to the hospital, and although the doctors do all that they can, Ted, Sam, and Tammy are told that he didn't make it. And so they go to say their goodbyes, but just as Ted finishes giving John a heartfelt farewell, John jump scares them and reveals it was all a prank. He then asks Sam out, and the two confirm their relationship with a kiss before Patrick Megan shows up and says that after seeing John sacrifice his life for Ted's, he was reminded of why he chose to do the kind of work he does and decides to take their case, which sometime later, Megan eventually wins. So Ted, now going by Ted Clubberlang, with it now confirmed that he exhibits all the qualities of personhood, immediately following the trial proposes to Tammy once again, and she says yes with them getting remarried not too long after, as well as having a baby boy who they name Apollo Creed Clubberlang. And that was our recap of Ted's 1 and 2. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And also let us know in the comments below which of the two Ted films you prefer. But once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.